Hello, everyone, and welcome back for another episode of the Outdoor Adventure Series podcast, where we celebrate individuals and families, businesses, and organizations that seek out and promote the exploration, stewardship, conservation, access, and enjoyment of the outdoors. Our sponsor of today's episode is Gulf Shores and Orange Beach Tourism. Warm temps and fresh seafood make the Alabama Gulf Coast the perfect destination for your family vacation, couples getaway, outdoor adventure, meetings, conferences, and conventions. Our guest today is Courtney Weatherby. Courtney is the Coastal Outreach Manager for Alabama Audubon. She is an environmental educator and conservationist. She loves spending time outdoors in a variety of capacities, birding, fishing, kayaking, snorkeling, or diving whenever the opportunity arises. Courtney, it's a pleasure to have you on the Outdoor Adventure Series. Thank you for joining us. Thanks so much for having me on today, Howard. Fantastic. And, and, and um, as I was reading the introduction on my end and, and kind of starting to read about a little bit more about you, and I'm thinking Alabama, Gulf Shores, the water, nature, I, I'm sure you have a, a lot of free time to do all those activities. You have work is just a piece of cake and you're just out there enjoying yourselves all the time. Well, I'm fortunate enough that my work takes me outside quite a bit, but you know, when you live in a beautiful place like lower Alabama, the opportunities to get outside and recreate are really endless. So I definitely try to take advantage of that as well. Fantastic. And I do have to admit in the spirit of full disclosure, I lived in Alabama for a year, a long time ago. Let's just say it was probably about half my life ago. We won't go into that <laughs> into any more detail, but as I look back, even within that year, I did not take advantage of the outdoors and the the wonderful uh, nature, the water, the birding uh, that Alabama had to offer. And I'm really excited to be able to get down there in September to explore. And so your interview today is, is just really going to help whet my appetite and I'm sure my fellow outdoor uh, writers, their appetite as well to come down and enjoy uh, South Alabama. So thank you again. Yeah, it'll be great to have you back and to introduce some new people to the uh, best, kept, best kept secret down here in lower Alabama. Fantastic. And so what I'd love to do if we can, before we kind of dive into Alabama Audubon and uh, what your perspective is of why Southern Alabama, why Audubon, it's just to learn a little bit more about you and your work. So tell us a little bit about your background. Okay. So I was born and raised in the great state of Nebraska. Go Big Red, go Huskers. And growing up, um, my dad is an avid angler and hunter and outdoorsman. And he and my mom both really gave my brother and I a lot of opportunity to explore the outdoors and figure out how we connect with nature. And while I enjoy enjoying the outdoors in a lot of different ways, I've always really been drawn to the water. And that led me to pursuing a major in college in marine biology. And when I tell people that, I get some like head tilts and some funny looks and they're <laughs> like, how are you born and raised in Nebraska and you wanted to major in marine biology? And I don't really have a great answer to it other than I was just, it was something that I was really drawn to and I think it was kind of meant to be. So I went to a school in Missouri, again, no ocean there, but we partnered with the University of Southern Mississippi. And so I spent all my summers down in Ocean Springs, Mississippi, and I was taking my marine science coursework. So that's how I got my, my background in marine science. And then after I graduated, I've been super fortunate to work in some incredible places that also afford me the opportunities to play a lot outside places like the Florida Keys, Charleston, South Carolina, Alaska, the Chesapeake Bay in Virginia, and I'm down here in lower Alabama. And all of my jobs before this one were all about marine science education and conservation. And how I got into birding was thanks to a coworker when I worked in Charleston. And I have to admit to people that when I first learned that like going out and looking at birds and identifying birds was a thing that people did, I was really into it. I kind of wrote it off. 
but birding really snuck up on me okay and I just like had all these opportunities to out with some really incredible birders some really great mentors of mine and then all of a sudden I just had would have one neat experience and then another and then before I knew it just bam I was I was a birder and that now it is something that brings me a lot of joy and it is just as big of a part of my career as anything else and what drew me to this position with Audubon is that it puts science and conservation hand in hand with education and that is really all that I've ever wanted to do is to connect people with nature and to help give them ways that they can help protect it and that's really the goal of National Audubon and Alabama Audubon is to protect birds and the habitat that they rely on through science and advocacy and education. So, Very good. And you really had me wondering of Nebraska, Missouri, and where is that little entry into, of, of water? And I'm, I'm glad you elaborated on that. And, and the places that you have experienced your learning uh, the Chesapeake, Florida Keys, go- the Gulf. It, you, you've been at the the creme de la creme of outdoor venues, and I, I think that is just absolutely phenomenal. Question that I have before we kind of dive uh, into the again the Alabama Audubon is, as an avid birder, what was that moment where your interest kind of tip to why am I going to be interested in this? What's in it for my interest, my education, my passion? What was that that moment th- that occurred for you? Yeah, I definitely didn't think that I was going to be into the whole birding thing. And I certainly didn't think that I was going to enjoy it to the extent that I do. And definitely didn't think that it was going to become a huge part of my career. But like I said, um, it was just these small bird and nature moments that I kept having. And I feel like it's almost like any hobby that you have, you start it and then something cool happens and it draws you in a little bit more. Right. So I remember, like, for example, I remember seeing in Anhinga, which is a mostly black bird and it's breeding plumage. And it has this gorgeous teal eye ring that just really pops on an otherwise black bird. And I was just like, wow, that's super, super cool. Or getting to see like a black-throated blue warbler for the first time and thinking to myself that maybe warblers would be the frustration to learn and figure out because they can be hard to identify, right? So that was a big part of it. And then another kind of like funny thing that drew me into birding is that um, my coworker that was really into birding, she knew that I loved like I loved fish and marine invertebrates, right? And I just loved the diversity and the different adaptations and stuff like that. And she looked at me one day and she goes, me, birds have all those things as well. They have cool niches and adaptations and stuff like that. And you don't have to be underwater to see them. They are all around you. And so once she said that, it kind of just clicked for me. And it was almost like a challenge where I started looking at birds and being like, oh, is she right? And it turns out that she was right, which really just like drew me more into paying more attention about those birds. So like any hobby, people really get into you, have cool experiences that draw you in and keep you coming back for more. 